welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about storing stick welding electrodes at elevated temperature in an oven. When do you need to do that? Why would you do it? What happens if you don't? Those are all questions I get asked in the comments pretty often. So I thought maybe we could have a little bit of a chat about it. Now before we get into it, let me give a quick disclaimer that uh, you know this is a very nuanced topic. So you shouldn't base your decisions off what you're hearing in this video or any other YouTube video or blog article. You should follow all applicable codes and blueprint requirements anytime you're welding anything critical. Why would you store electrodes in an oven? Well, it's to control the amount of moisture that's in the flux coating on the outside of this center core. Now the type of electrode that this really applies to is a 7018 or any other low hydrogen electrode. Now what's special from a materials perspective about rods like this is that they can deposit a really low hydrogen content. However, if there's a bunch of moisture or water absorbed into the flux coating, water, H2O, that becomes a source of hydrogen. And so that can end up depositing some amount of hydrogen and you won't get as low a deposit as you otherwise could with this type of electrode. Other electrodes like a 6010 or 6011 actually deposit a ton of hydrogen because they're loaded with hydrogen in the flux, right? It's a cellulose electrode. You know, a lot of them uh, have been made with a bunch of sawdust in it. 6013 also deposits a bit of hydrogen as well. So, you know, you're not necessarily avoiding the hydrogen deposit problem by moving to a different type of electrode, but we'll get back to that here at the end of the video. Let's get back into why you care about depositing hydrogen in your material. Well, the reason is that it can cause cracking, but it only does so in certain situations. Now, the cracking that happens from having some hydrogen in in your steel metal diffused in there um, actually doesn't happen right when it freezes or solidifies together. It usually happens a little later on after it cools down. Now in order for this to happen, you don't just need hydrogen. That's not the only ingredient. There's actually three ingredients that you need. One is a material that's susceptible to it, and that usually means a higher strength or harder steel. Two, you need to have something pulling on it, and usually that comes in the form of restraint or a thicker material. And three, you also do need to have that presence of hydrogen. So when you have all those together, the combination of that can lead to that hydrogen-induced cracking. Now in welding codes, like this structural code from American Welding Society, there are specific guidelines that talk about you know, when these things come into play and when they apply, and when you have to use certain mitigating factors, which include using low hydrogen electrodes, and part of that is proper storage, storage in a rod oven, as well as other mitigating factors like you know appropriate use of preheat, right? So just storing electrodes in an oven, that in and of itself doesn't get you out of the woods. Now determining where that line is for using low hydrogen practices and preheat is a bit of a nuanced process, and it has to do with different groups of materials, or other equations that take into account all of the chemical elements in a particular steel. But, you know, as a general uh, guideline to kind of give you an idea where we're at, for a mild steel like A36 that's less than three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters in the thickness, you can weld that without using low hydrogen electrodes and without using any extensive preheat, at least over freezing temperature. Now let me just mention a couple of things. One is if you use your electrodes straight out of a hermetically sealed container, these little Harbor Freight tubes like this, that doesn't count as a hermetically sealed container. But if you use them straight out of there, you don't need to keep them in a rod oven uh, as long as you use them within a certain period of time. Usually it's around four hours. Let me just also mention that if you are welding to this particular code or a lot of other codes and you are using a low hydrogen electrode, you need to follow the full low hydrogen practice just because it's a requirement of the rules in the book here. But for regular Joe in the garage, does it really matter? Do you have to do that? Because I often hear people say, oh, I don't use 7018s because I don't have a rod oven, so I use a 6011 instead. Well, that doesn't really solve the hydrogen problem. You're dumping tons of hydrogen in if you're welding with a 6010 or 6011, right? And so I like to run 7018s, not just for the low hydrogen reason, but just because they run really nice. They give you a really smooth bead. The slag comes off easily. There's a lot of great things about running a 7018. Now for me in my garage, I'm typically welding on stuff that isn't in any kind of critical application. It's usually about a quarter of an inch or six millimeters thick or thinner 
And on top of that, it's just regular mild steel. So I don't have any of those other ingredients really involved that would lead to that hydrogen induced cracking. So for that reason, I feel comfortable uh, keeping my electrodes rather than in an oven, just in one of these storage tubes. I'll put a link to these down in the description in case that's something that you want to check out for yourself. All right, so again, I can't decide what's appropriate for your situation, but that's a little bit about how it works and the, the what and why and what I do in my shop. Well, if you like this video or learned something here, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and we'll see you next time.